This week on Crunchyk, we're talking about PATH and its possible raise at a billion dollar valuation, Google's big purchase of Waze, and the recap from Apple's WWDC conference. Hi, I'm Lena Rao. I'm Colleen Taylor. And I'm Greg Compeck. Welcome to Crunch Week, where we talk about the week's most interesting stories. Um, Lots of news, actually, from uh, private social network Path uh, this week. Uh, yeah, you and broke a big story today. Alexia, uh, TechCrunch's co-editor, and I did break um, some uh, a story on how um, Path, which is founded by uh, former Facebooker Dave Morin, um, is in the process of uh, raising um, a new round of funding that would potentially value it at a billion dollars. We've heard that that number's been thrown out, nothing's sort of formalized, but um, they are raising, and you know, we, uh, you know, according to our sources, that number, that valuation has been out there. So, um, kind of a, a, a large number. They were valued at, I think, uh, 250 million at the last round last year. So it's a big jump. No. Yeah. Do you guys um, use Path? Show of hands. I do. Not actively. Yeah. I actively use it. I use it every day. Yeah. But um, I'm, you know, a, you know. As a, that Gawker report that came out this week had sort of stated, you know, maybe I'm in the minority. I, I don't know. Well, and this is the thing with Path. I think so many people, if you look at the comments on the article that you and Alexia wrote, so many people are skeptical that anyone's using Path. Yeah. Um, and it's just the nature of the network itself, too, I think, because it is private. So sure. you can't see who else is using it. Like. Lena, I'm not connected with you on Path, right. so I had no idea you were a huge Path That's user. That's right. Yeah, and I actually only use it with um, my husband. I and a lot. It's funny. A lot of people that I know use it that way. They use it really for just a specific person or family or things like that. Though you know, that being said, I don't. You know, that's just me and the few people. You know, as um, some people have pointed out. You know, everyone knows about Path in Silicon Valley, but is it really one of those apps that? Um, people are using, you know, outside of our little bubble. Well, to hear Dave Morin tell it, it is being used outside of our bubble, and that's where a lot of the growth is happening. That's why uh, people in Silicon Valley are maybe a little skeptical, but it's not catching on for the first time here right now. It already caught on here a year and a half ago, and then some people haven't stuck around with it. But he's saying that they're seeing a lot of growth in these Spanish-speaking countries, in South America, mm -hmm. in Central America, well, in Middle Well, there's still America. a lot of opportunity, it seems like. Um, our colleague, Kim, you know, Kim McCutler, uh, wrote a piece um, as well talking about how there's a big push um, in that area that Path has been, you know, advertising against. Uh, uh, for you know Spanish-speaking users, and it seems like you know, maybe that's going to work for them. Yeah, there's just so much scandal about Path right now, and I think that there, it's maybe it's just sort of maybe it's something about Dave Morin, the fact that he's kind of a famously successful guy. You know, he's had success before. He had Facebook stock. You know, he has this. He's kind of a big personality here in Silicon Valley, and so I don't know. Path is one of the most interesting situations right now, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely one of those, you know, I think every company goes through those cycles of hype and everyone loving you, you know, in the media, and then you go through the cycle of some people starting to hate you too and point out some flaws and holes and things like that, and maybe Path's just at that point. Um, but, you know, I, you have to wonder, you know, if investors are you know, jumping at or even, look, you know, throwing out the billion dollar valuation. Like, what uh, what do they know that we don't know? Well, I was just going to ask you that because <laughs> you have these sources who told you that they're right. raising. I mean, are these, are people receptive to that? Are they like, yeah, I can't wait to get on down that billion dollar <laughs> valuation? Or are they skeptical? Of I mean, it, I think investors are, you know, it's, it's from what Alexia and I, you know, seem to have learned, it, investors are definitely, um, it, that's a you know that billion dollar valuation is out there. Is it you know is it formalized? No, not yet. Um, and and you know I think I'd say probably the range is I'm sure 750 million or 600 million up to that. I think it's as high as a billion. Um, but I wonder if they're looking at engagement from the users that are actually using the app and if those are high. I mean it's still sort of unclear what. Um, you know what those numbers are, and you know, as in you know, so many private companies, we just may not know them. Um, but 
we'll see. Stay tuned. We'll see if they've uh, if they end up raising and, and what that valuation is. We'll keep digging. Why is a one billion dollar valuation like the new thing? Like, it is. It feels right? like in the last month, like every other company that's like their their valuation or that they're raising has yeah, leaked out. Snap, was, Snapchat, I think, was like the other one that that came out yeah. earlier this week. Yeah. And well, more confirmed billion dollar valuation, although not officially confirmed that Google paid that much, right. but we sure. reported that Waze this week, uh, it sold to Google and, and at a supposed 1.1 billion, I That's think, right. Ingrid London yeah. had that story. That's right, yeah. So, big sale there. I know, and, and you know, a lot of people, you know, it, it, it's interesting because there's a lot of reasons why I think people, you know, everyone speculated why Google was buying Waze. Google actually didn't really talk that much about why um, their, their blog uh, post announcing it was pretty short and sweet considering um, all the sort of surrounding news around it. But, um, you know, a lot of people speculated it was to get uh, Waze out of the hands of Facebook or Apple. What do you think about that? Yeah, there's that. Um, in terms of things that Google could integrate quickly from Waze and really get out of uh, Waze immediately, their, their traffic data is really good, whereas Google's is kind of lacking. So That's if you're stuck right. in traffic, and uh, even their, their rerouting data. So if you wanted to reroute you around whatever traffic is going on, that's a really hard pro pro problem from a computer science standpoint. So if Waze has already done this, as long as Google can find a way to take that data and apply it to their maps or kind of mash it up with the data they already have and kind of average out the two, it could improve Google Maps drastically while Waze can still be kind of this independent product over on the side. Right, and Waze is iOS-centric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting as I think Google is always trying to figure out how to get a little bit more involved on those iOS devices because uh, obviously they have their Android operating system, but um, they, they need to work well on iOS too. So maybe it brings those capabilities to the table. Uh, Rip Empson had a great post mm -hmm. that you all should read. WTF is Waze and why did Google just pay a billion dollars plus for it? And I thought that was a hilarious headline. It got a little bit of pushback from some other people in this space who thought it was a little too flippant, but I liked it. But it's pretty, he really dives deep into yes, right. what's Waze because I think it's this company that it's insidery, it's tech blog, but I think the larger population had never heard of Waze until this week when it got bought by Google. So It actually did pretty well just because it, it existed in this space as a free navigation system before Apple or before Google Maps were available on iOS yeah. or before uh, Apple Maps was doing turn by turn. So like it hit right in this little sweet spot where everyone was getting on these smartphones and everyone was getting on iOS, but there was no turn by turn. You know, it was like this big competitive advantage for Android to have this amazing turn-by-turn -turn system, and iOS had nothing. So Waze just exploded, yeah, and then gets swooped up by the competition, yeah, by yeah. Google. That's yeah. Right. So I guess it wasn't that insidery, but <laughs> yeah, you know, people who have iOS devices and download turn-by-turn -turn navigation, that's not like a huge mainstream thing. I guess it is getting there now, but uh, well, yeah, um, speaking of iOS, uh, big. Week for all Apple lovers, WWDC. Yeah, you were there. WWDC. Yeah, it's uh, one of our funnest and most stressful weeks <laughs> <laughs> because you're at this keynote and the Wi-Fi doesn't want to stay up, and you have a bunch of people waiting for news, and it gets kind of scary. But yeah, WWDC. You did a great job. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Uh, we did a recap video earlier this week, so I'm not going right. to go super deep into uh, you know what they announced. But the two really big things are probably OS 10 Mavericks, which is uh, the new version of Apple's computer operating system, and then iOS 7. Um, iOS 7 has just been drastically overhauled. Pretty much every app has been built from the ground up to kind of ditch the, the skeuomorphism, the, the realism that they used to have. Um, all the icons uh, have been over uh, redone, which has been kind of controversial. It yeah. has. I kind of am loving that now because, you know, Monday when the keynote happened, you know, you kind of get this glow around it, and everyone who was in that room came out of that room and said, oh, the new iOS 7, it's gorgeous, we love it. And then as more people look at it as that honeymoon phase wears off, now there's a lot of criticism about the new design of iOS 7. Even yeah. though, you know, it's obviously not out yet, this is just a, some beta images, beta versions developers uh, have. But it's, uh, there, there's criticism now. Yeah, and I'm curious to see how that goes moving forward, because it seems like there's gonna be an almost inevitable backlash because right. if you look at the people that are kind of criticizing it now, those are the people that do pay a lot of attention to Apple, right? Apple has sold hundreds of millions of <laughs> iOS devices. How many people actually pay attention? How many people are just gonna turn on their iOS device and be like, why did this change? What, did I get hacked? What has happened here? Like, why are these Technicolor now? Or like, crazy <laughs> rainbow colors? Yeah. So. Do you like the design of iOS 7? 
I like what I've seen in screenshots and, and the like, yeah. Yeah, I think I think the new iPhones like, are pretty. Yeah, I it's, like it. It's I hard. Think it looks really nice. It's a little bit hard to criticize it now just because it's yeah. the, the very first beta, and it's so, so different than what they showed before. Uh, like, no matter what, when it's such a stark contrast to what you've seen before, there's always going to be that little bit of uh, system shock, almost. Right. Well, I was actually kind of interested also in iTunes Radio. What would you think of that? Do you think it's going to be like this Pandora killer, Spotify killer? That... I think the biggest benefit they have versus Pandora is that you have to sign up for Pandora. You can't just open the app and as a new user and be like, oh, it's Pandora time. Right. It, you open the app and it says, unless something's changed, unless I've missed something, uh, it says, hey, sign up and we'll start playing your radio stations. And most people will just click away, you know, yeah. you get that, that, that bounce effect. Whereas uh, with iTunes Radio, it's built right in the music app. So people who want that and don't want to deal with signing up for Pandora can just pop it in the music app. And now, does iTunes Radio, do you know, does it only play your songs or does it play? No. Oh, okay, uh, so it doesn't have to be stuff you've bought. You can pick from stuff in your songs and like it, it, it'll probably highlight those things. Uh, but no, it's it's as far as I know, through uh, from all of iTunes catalog, works in the same style as Pandora. And if a song's playing, you can do it like a one-click purchase through iTunes. So, cool, cool. Well, um, I think that's all the time we have for this week. But definitely tune in next week.